From physics engines to scenic worlds, immersive experiences to action-packed adventures, the universes that house some of our favorite games are truly varied and invoke a sense of enjoyment that you can't find elsewhere. It's pretty fucking cool in my opinion. I mean, what better way to attract and grow an audience than to provide an interactive story that's fun to both look at and be a part of? Sadly, this isn't always the case. For every Ocarina of Time, there's at least two Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Like, how do you make something that mediocre out of such a cool IP? I mean, I don't know. Maybe take away cooperative campaign and give me the slowest fucking story ever? Like, the gameplay was cool, but just... You played with my heart, Activision. It fucking hurt my feelings. But I digress. I'm more or less concerned about stagnation within the gaming industry and this normalization trend we see on a regular basis, some of which is contributed to by YouTube and its content creators. I would also like to add the disclaimer that this is an opinion piece with the goal of opening the argument up to discussion, and is entirely open to criticism, so please, if you have intelligent criticisms to give me, do so in the comments section, I'll gladly follow up. I'm not going to pretend to be the person who understands the road we have to take to move away from this, I just want us to look at our beloved game and question whether they're part of the problem, and furthermore, to look at ourselves as consumers and what we can do to push away from this trend. Okay, well, pleading for my life aside, we need to talk about typical story progression. More specifically, the monomyth, also known as the hero circle. The hero circle is pretty common in the video game industry as the standard for storytelling. To break it down, it's essentially a hero living a normal life. Said hero then is put within a world of wonder and, more importantly, discomfort that he seeks to return from. He then encounters an evil dude who's holding the key to returning and the hero fights him or her and wins. He then returns to his world contented and changed after his experiences. This is a very common and, in my opinion, overplayed type of storytelling within interactive media. And if this sounds familiar to you, it might be because this is the general architecture used in games such as Mario, Donkey Kong, Legend of Zelda, Castlevania, Metroid, Diablo, Shovel Knight, Soma, Firewatch, Assassin's Creed, and even the Minecraft story mode. And I'm not knocking this whatsoever. It's worked and it continues to work for so many franchises for a reason. It's just the basis for some solid storytelling. However, this is also a very tired and overplayed type of story. To make a point, let's examine the last games that took the world and held it by storm. Minecraft and... League of Legends. These are two games that continue to have an overwhelmingly large audience despite not having any story whatsoever. Why? because they filled a void that AAA developers didn't want to touch and most indie companies couldn't touch due to finances. It was only when Microsoft saw that Minecraft wasn't slowing down that they decided to buy their way into the game, and admittedly, I have only watched the Minecraft story mode. I don't know how it feels as a game, but it suffers from the same cheesy heroic dialogue and weak-willed attempt at pushing barriers that most all other big-budget games go through. Metacritic stores are typically a solid rating system for games, and those numbers don't lie. Minecraft Story Mode bombed compared to original Minecraft. And while League of Legends did have a story initially, it was eventually dropped due to multiple claimed reasons from Riot Games. Whether that's for the better or worse is up to fans of the game. My point is, these are games that are based on what we were given by the large developers wouldn't have succeeded and they succeeded specifically because developers can't guide the market the way they think they can. <sighs> I I'm sorry, I'm not saying they didn't put effort into making this. All I'm saying is maybe when you buy rights to a game that's literally based on being as creative as you possibly can while also having as much fun as you can, you put effort into making the story mode as creative as humanly possible. Not a stereotypical adventure led by an unconventional hero. You guys got Patton Oswalt to do the voice of your main male character and you couldn't think of any better scenarios to put him in in a blank canvas where literally anything is possible. That makes me angry, honestly. And I'm specifically angry, developers, because we're not allowed to criticize you for your releases for the amount of effort you put in. Because when the few who have valid points do speak out against developers, they're grouped with a vocal minority who just don't understand. I just don't see any valid excuse that explains away that horridly weak storytelling, and they're not alone. This is a trend we see all across the board with AAA developers and indie devs alike. You're artists. You have all of digital creation at your fingertips to give your consumers something truly wonderful, and what you do for us as consumers is truly wonderful. Don't mistake my statements as attacks. On the other side of that coin, however, is your artists but your medium isn't conventional art. It's a combination of gorgeous landscapes and complex math, silk tapestry and cold logic. 
But as wondrous as the results are, they're not above reproach. And I think it's time that we as consumers begin to think critically and voice our opinions about the games being given to us and their quality in 2016 and going forward. I guess the best way to succinctly state my point is, we as a community deserve better than extremely lazy and predictable writing. I don't feel entitled when I say that. We're also quick to judge filmmakers for when something is clearly telegraphed. Why is it so wild of us to do the same with an interactive medium such as a video game? Anyway, on to my next complaint. Okay, I can definitely see both sides of the argument here, but why bother changing when it's still getting us by shouldn't be how you appear to respond to your audience. We don't always need an action-adventure game or a multiplayer-centric shooter. Yes, they're popular, but it's also an oversaturated market. You don't see any indie games like that breaking the news for more than a week or two. We certainly don't need another shooter to tide us over until Action Adventure 2, Return of Generic Evil Person with a Sinister Laugh, comes out. When people overwhelmingly complain about your IP being a rehash of its latest installment with more futuristic... Where the fuck are you going, Call of Duty? You get back here right now because you know you need to hear this. When people complain because you're essentially releasing the same game with updated textures and water effects, you have to respond or you're going to tank. You can't keep depending on your name getting you by. I say this not as an angry critic, I say this as a one-time fan who remembers the joy he got from Modern Warfare 1, but also recognizes that just because you emulate the multiplayer from the original doesn't mean you capture its majesty. If the formula isn't working for the audience, you change the formula, not the audience. Especially when that audience is the only audience you have. Yearly releases and microtransactions only extend the inevitable, not halt it. Your game is becoming a meme because you have to keep throwing trash and flash into your games in order to keep it relevant. The story mode is now a tacked on joke as opposed to the focus, and you hinge on younger players enjoying competition as opposed to any real analysis of the statements you make with your content. Anyway, sorry about that. It's not that I hate you, Call of Duty, it's just, god damn, I feel really strongly about this. I have splendid memories of playing these games with friends late into the night, so please get your shit together. Make your games fun again. Please and thank you. But I'm not here to harp specifically on Call of Duty, because it's not just Call of Duty. This is actually a really common theme we see in gaming. I feel like Call of Duty sees so much hate because it's one of the worst offenders, but that doesn't excuse the others. Like, at least in Mario, it typically comes with a few new integral and well-designed game mechanics. Not just a few new perks and some microtransaction DLC to atone for the sin of Commando Pro. I'm sorry, that's the last one, I promise. All jokes aside, this is a very serious problem because it technically falls under the same category as my last point. Themes within video games that leads towards homogenization within a valued creative medium. So you may be asking why I decided to make this an entirely separate point, to which I would reply, good fucking question you beautiful person, thank you very much for the lack of hatred in your tone and rationalism in your curiosity. But I would also follow it up with, because without diversity within our mediums, we would begin to see lapse in the development of our culture, individual games would only be recognizable by their characters and would functionally be the same in design, inseparable from one another, and because we as consumers, as players of these games given to us by developers, would become tired and only pay for the one that looked the best, not the one that might give us the most enjoyment or most fulfilling experience. And I know this Pavlovian extremist industry future I'm painting is pretty unlikely, but if I've learned anything from the past game franchises burning me, it's that the people who pay to have this content made will gladly stick to one uniform set of games and apply stock textures to it if we're willing to pay for it. We as consumers have every right to put our foot down and say no, this type of game won't work within the market anymore. Call of Duty is only still around for people to complain about because those same people buy it hoping to relive the joys of younger days. But this video is sadly already looking to be longer than my viewer retention, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to closing statements. Developers. I'm not saying you're all lazy or sloppy, you provide us with amazing experiences. I'm just saying that games have started to become too predictable and while I don't fault anyone for attempting to clone success, I can fault you for commonly taking the easy way out and ultimately cheating your players out of either a potentially great story or a unique experience. Gamers. Because I've been referring to us as consumers for almost this entire video, but this is what we truly are. We have to be more discerning in our tastes. How many times have you purchased a game that you felt bored by? Truly. I want you to honestly let me know in the comments because I'm interested. I myself have found that most games I purchase have amazing premises, but are cheaply delivered or not what I expected when purchased, which definitely contributed to why I decided to make this video. 
We just need to be willing to put our foot down more often. When we prove to developers that we're serious and wanting more unique playing experience, that's what we will receive. We can't expect another jazz punk goat simulator or Honeycam Studio if we're not vocal about it. And if you don't personally enjoy these games, I apologize for that, but please don't be pedantic in your statements. Because while that is a subjective view, the point remains. Anyway, I truly hope that those of you who made it through to the end with me have a wonderful day. I may or may not do a part 2 because this ran on a lot longer than I wanted it to, and I didn't even get to touch on my views on developers that don't deserve the love they get like Bethesda. I'm telling you that opinion has started some drawn out arguments within my friend circle more than once. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, or subscribe. All of that really helps motivate me, and I will see you lovely people in the next video. Peace.